I broke through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows ekrastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. I'm Spencer with the MacGuffin, and I'm joined by Matthew Willard. My pants are about to drop. You heard it here first. Honey, pants are about to drop. I'm sorry, my kids. I don't want to embarrass you. The beauty of the internet. This will live on forever. No, 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 you blew it. No, I'm not going to do it. Um, you are the director of Fat Kid Rules the World, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute, but I want to talk about, you know, some of your older work because I am a huge fan of yours. Like, I, like, you know, I am a fan of Scream. I like, you know, SLC Punk. I like 13 Ghosts. Like, I go, I go the whole catalog. Um, we need to get you out more. Yeah. Believe me, I, I pay for these films too, so believe me, the, the box office includes me. Um, you have a tremendous track record as an actor. Um, what has your sort of thought been like looking back at your career as an actor? Do you feel like you have been able to do the roles you've wanted? No, or, no way. And that bring, I mean, that's sort of like why you've started getting into producing, I'm assuming. Well, um, no, I, I don't think, I think they're, they're, they're not necessarily related. Um, in terms of my career as an actor, I always want to do more. I mean, nobody becomes an actor who is, wants to sit on the bench. I mean, you want to be the guy. You want to be the guy above the titles and has the chance to carry a film. I mean, SLC Punk, for me, is a great example of a movie that gave me the ability to like, carry every frame of the film. Which I totally understand and appreciate, but in some ways, actually, you know, things like 13 Ghosts, I don't necessarily think 13 Ghosts is a fantastic film, but I think your performance in the film is so memorable to me that it makes it like a special place in my heart because of that. Like, do you? By the way, you just pointed to your belly. You not your heart at all. Like, you this just is went like my place this is place roughly my, in my heart. heart I'm where a very I have small food. guy. Like, especially compared to you, sure. I don't feel like you realize how far it is your, from my belly. vital though. organs, right? right sure. All, like, it's minute. It's so this. small. Yeah. The distance. Yeah. Um, well, you, I mean, look. When you're a smaller character, you can do more. I mean, you have to do more to kind of make the cut. I mean, Hackers is an example where... Oh, God, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's hilarious. Oh, I love it. I, I love it. It's like orgasmic. Oh, my gosh. Dude, you I, were amazing. If we had the time, like, I would go through everything. That would be the worst interview ever. Um, I, 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 I'm not really caring about what they right, They don't like, care. It's all about, like, just enjoyment for uh, me. Do you want me to hug you? I will, I will oh, yeah, hug. We'll, at the we'll end hug. of this... We'll get, yeah, we'll by the way, do you see all the food we have? Yes. Look how big our movie yeah, is. Yeah. We have food for everyone. Well, Believe me, those French fries smell very I'm nice. I'm going to eat the crap out of that pizza as yeah, soon as this interview is over. I was going to do it, like, I was going to eat during the interview, and then I was like, oh, that's just rude, so I'm not going to do that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, look, when you're a smaller character, you can do more. You have the ability to kind of grab those moments and make them special. Uh, as you know, the number one on the call sheet, you have to track, and, you know, you go through the entire picture. Um, you have to build the character. And when you only have three or four scenes, you have the chance to do a lot more in a lot less time. What from your past has stood out the most to you? I mean, you've talked about like SLC Punk, but what, what ones hold a special place for you? Uh, well, SLC Punk is the great um, opportunity in my life to do a movie. I mean, look, I love all, I mean, to be honest with you, I have, oh, my wife just showed up. Hi, dear. Um, I have, look, every movie you do, I feel, you fall in love with, even though it's not great. I mean, Dungeon Siege. Return of the King, you know, Return of the King and Dungeon Siege Tale, the Uwe Boll movie. You know, I love, I like my performance in that movie. I like that movie um, because, you know, it's part of your life. It's part of your history. And not all of them are gems. I get that. But, you know, you, you like them all. So, I mean, SLC Punk might not have been, like, you know, commercially as big as something like Scream. Sure. But, you know, that and, like, another film I'm sure you've never heard of called The, F the Saint of Fort Washington with, I think it's Matthew Dillon, Matt Dillon, and... Uh, is that where he's Andy the Hunter. homeless guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah for like, sure. Those two films, like, for whatever reason, just connected in sort of, like, just a beautiful storytelling kind of way that, like, you think you know where the film is going, and then it completely turns what it is. And what is it like to, you know, be in a project like that, that's sort of, like, I don't know, a once-every-decade kind of thing? Well, I mean, thank you. It's, it's very flattering to think that we're once-every-decade for SLC Punk. Um... You know, look, I, I, there, there's things that you're, that you hold pride in, 
And that's what you really aim for is something that you can A, make a living doing uh, and B, find your pride in. I mean, Descendants is a great role for me. Um, and that Still whole George journey. Clooney's wife, like that's a pretty, that's, <laughs> pretty a special place that in terms doesn't of suck. cinema. Yes, it doesn't suck. That will never happen again in the history of cinema. Probably not. Um, but you know, that movie, that opportunity was just a great, it was a great job for me. Um, but like, you know, like, look, a Spooner is a movie that means a lot well, to me. I think, I think Spooner is really interesting. And I actually was looking for that because I heard you were a producer on it before, you know, I thought I saw the trailer before Sandance and stuff like that. And I was like, Wow, this looks like a really interesting sort of character study. And was it Nora Zahetny? Is that Nora Zahetny, yeah. Uh, she is just an amazing actress. And to have the two of you sort of these amazing indie, especially indie stars, working together was just a perfect pairing. What was it like, you know, going into the world of producing and trying to put this project together? Well, Drake Doremus, who went on to do like, like crazy. crazy. Yeah, he's blowing um, up like crazy. Huge. Uh, that was his first film. And that was something, you know, we did for less than 100 grand. And wow. so that was a thing wow. where a kid who I believed in was like, let's, I'm making a movie this year. And we had tried to do a movie. It's an interesting story, actually. We tried to do a movie with Sarah Silverman and myself uh, for three million bucks that would have taken place in China. Um, and we couldn't get the financing. So they were, he was so committed, him and his writing partner, Liz, Lindsay Stidham, were so committed to doing a movie. They were like, we're doing it no matter what. So they came back with this, with the script and Jonathan Schwartz from Crispy Films and I were like, oh, we'll do it. Um, and uh, it was just like one of those creative experiences where you're with a group of people just trying to make a great movie. And that's, you know, that's this, you know, it's 14 people, you know, nine people on set with like actors. And then it sort of rolls into, you know, Fat Kid Rules the World. Like this, I mean, you were speaking last night about how this is a project that spoke to you. I mean, I guess I, guess I was looking, the book came out nine years ago. I guess you must have optioned it like instantly when it came out. Um, what was the evolution of this film like for you? I'm proud to have it in Seattle. You know? Yeah, it's good. Uh, you know, there's a thing where, you know, I had just come off of Scooby-Doo and I thought, you know, I'll go direct the movie. for. T you know, I, I read the book and I, to me it's a story of this kid that's lost and finds punk rock music and it has a lot of stakes and a lot of energy and I identified with that kid because I was lost at the same age. Um, and I just saw it as an opportunity to make a movie for these group of kids that I was, you know, that the, the kid that didn't feel like he fit in high school and was kind of lost. So, um, you know, it was, it, it took a long time to get it done, but when we got it done, um, it was thrilling. And last night you were there. I, mean, I was, it was there. It was a good night last night. And, you know, after nine years of trying to get something done, um, it just felt amazing to oh, be in the room. It's like just that. It's also like... Is, is there an element of like seeing yourself represent? I mean, obviously you're a white male, so you're not like you know a minority or something that is has a much tougher time finding um, themselves in film. But even, just in terms of like a human, a person, like a like personality relating to something on film, just have like something you relate to on film. I mean, maybe SLC Punk was one that you would relate to, but just like in terms of cinema, like the disenfranchised character to see that on film that you can relate to. Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't think it's an original story, but because um, I think you know, I think that that story has been told in Hollywood. I just loved the, I, I just love the. Um, because the energy of it and the attitude of it. And look, and look, I directed it. So, so much of that story, you know, I pulled from the book. And there's elements that I was like, you know, that are directly pulled from my life. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, it was nice to be there. And also, I think I felt like to show the movie last night, I felt like it was as uh, people connected to it. Yeah. And that's the thing, like you sit in this room and you think and you wonder and you hope and you, is it going to laugh? Is it going to be dramatic? And then finally have a play last night and have people relate to it was awesome. What, what is it like? Was it that project that drew you on as a director just because you were so passionate about it? Or is directing like, you know, the new Matthew Willard? Well, I, if, I, if I could direct the rest of my life and not act again, I would. Um, I love directing. Uh, it was way more... I mean, I, I just, you know, to me, acting is very myopic. It's all your perspective and what's important to you. And that, to me, telling a story, directing a movie is about a group of people. And I just think it's way more powerful. Is there an element, though, of like, you know, seeing how the sausage is made now that you really have to deal with much more of the studios and getting the funding, all that stuff? Whereas, like, as an actor, I mean, you have to audition and stuff. 
but you show up on set and it's sort of like, okay, we're ready to go. But now it's sort of like, okay, now I have to put a Pepsi can and frame. See, I like that though. But I like that. I mean, yes, I, it's way more elements that you have to kind of mediate and go between. But to me, you know, if just showing up and hitting a mark and saying a line and making the right face, well, it, it's too simple. The interesting thing is like getting problems and having to answer and, and answer the riddle every day. I mean, independent film, you're like throwing up a target and you're hoping everyone can hit the same target. But the problem is that 90% of the staff is understaffed. They're, you know, they're not ready. That's not true. Sorry, the rest of the cast is talking shit about me across the... I hear you talking crap about me. I hear you talking about me. I hear you. I hear you. It makes me sad. We are talking about I have the food and you can't eat it. Yeah. <laughs> is that on? It's gonna be like a just like a, we have like the jets and they are the sharks. That's sharks. a much bigger sharks though. Yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, but I like that. I mean, I like having to answer the problem every day. On an independent film, something goes is gonna go wrong, and you have to figure out a way to shoot around it and make it okay. And that to me, that riddle every day is what's exciting. It's way more exciting than memorizing a page of lines. Um, in terms of what, what's next, I keep talking about you want to direct more. I know you're acting in a Clint Eastwood film, thanks to your sister Amy for that. Um, uh, but he's acting in it. It's um, right. Yeah, Rob it's still, I mean, it's still Clint Eastwood. Yes, like, he's acting. Like, yes. Even if you're in like a scene, you'd be like, "So, uh, Clint, what did you do in this yeah. scene?" <laughs> you know, there's a lot of knowledge to be gleaned. Yes, there. I I play his nemesis. So that's fun. Really? Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, it's good. Um, it's shockingly, um, I lose. I know that's going to be. Oh, damn it. I like, know, this it's going to be. Time weird. The Washington Generals were going to win, right? Yeah, that's not I, I had my money on it. I was yeah. like, okay, Clint Eastwood, loser. Yeah, this time. time, yeah. To me. Um, yeah, and now I start, you know, today's the first day of me being a director, to be honest. I mean, you know, it's From out in the own. world. Yeah. Well, it's also like, you know, you keep telling people I can direct, you keep telling people I want to do things, but nobody's seen the movie. And so now that people have seen the movie, it just kind of changes the tone of that conversation a little, and it's exciting. Well, that's a good point. Uh, where can people see movies? Is it going to get a theatrical release that they can anticipate? Where can they find more information out I don't about know. it? I'll I mean, put a little box down here yeah, for every link. The box says, I don't know. I mean, we, you know, we, we're in a good place. We got great press. We <laughs> great reviews last night. We had all distributors there. But we are an independent film about a disenfranchised, Revolution. obese teenager. And... You know, I, th I think that story is worthy to be told. I think people will respond to it, but it's just you have to convince people with money that, to put more money into it. I mean, I think it's one of those things that if you sell it as like a disenfranchised fat teenager, that might not sell it. But there's a story there about his journey that I think is relatable to everyone. I totally agree, but then how do you... I mean, look, I, I think if you sell it... I mean, look, I showed it to... La on Monday of last week, I, showed, I teach at Vancouver Film School, and I showed it to 118 to 25-year-olds, and they went crazy for it. And so you almost want to take all these buyers and these guys that sit there and choose what not to buy rather than what to buy. If, if I were going to sell it, I would be like, it's like The Hangover, but with a lot less uh, nudity. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not even close. In fact, that's but it. that's how I would I'm sell it. I'm eating the pizza. People would buy that. This interview is over. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm eating the pizza. I'm literally going to eat the pizza. I, I'm just saying, that is what Hollywood buy. Yes, like, I know, but we, you know, we... But sadly, I, I, I understand that you have to make this journey and you have to figure out how to get in people. And I'm, I'm not... The good news, yeah, but the good news, we will find... I mean, look, I think that after the success of last night and over the course of this... Uh, over the course of this festival, we will find a place. I mean, I think that, that I'm sa it's safe to say, we, wherever it is, there will be a way to find it. Okay, so that film we're done with. What about you? Where can people find more of your projects and you? I know you have a Twitter. I do. Um, you know, I'll put that here since. Yeah, that's. I mean, you know, it's funny. I just started tweeting, and my uh, wife I, hates it. I am it. one of those followers. Yeah, so. my wife hates it as I talk about raunchy stuff and like she's rolling her eyes um, website anything yeah no I have Facebook's only for my friends you are so a hard man to find then my Facebook is only for my friends and then I have this Twitter thing but you know I mean look I, Twitter. my whole life is <clears throat> I don't love the celebrity of it it's a byproduct and it's essential I guess but the reality is is that um, I like just being a normal kind of dude my life is not about Hollywood I'm not about the hype 
Well, there and, you go. Uh, Matthew Lillard, normal kind of dude. Thank Billy you so Campbell's much. not going to eat. Yeah. Yes. Thank and, you. We're uh, eating the foods here. We're out. Check out more interviews at MacGuffinPodcast.com. Dude, that was good. He's actually pretty good. I will say that. I'm shocked. <laughs> Magneto can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. It's tight, don't even try to bite the sun. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight.